The best ones are these that I've read from the critics. It costs a lot in terms of research to get there. We're going to have to spend money to get these crude technologies to the point where we can reliably use them. It will cost something in social burden. If we live longer, there will be a lot more people. There will be more people around, particularly if we don't control population and so forth. There's an, econ excuse me, an environmental impact here of having more people live longer. That's a problem. I don't think it's an in-principle problem. It's something, however, that we do have to think about. It may mean that we have to become very aggressive about the impact of each individual on the planet in terms of uh, environmental impact. It may mean that we have to become aggressive about population control. But it's not an argument against living longer or having better children. These are just costs that we have to wrestle with. I've mentioned safety. I'm not going to uh, say much about that. And believe it or not, the coup de gras argument that the new Puritans use is that it's unfair. At the end of the day, what you find out is that people say, what this is going to do is make an elite live longer and have better babies and are better uh, people with better traits and poor people within a country or poor countries who can't do these things. One response to this is the Jimmy Carter response is that life was never fair and there are huge disadvantages. Every one of the critics I tell you about who's writing that it, we shouldn't do this because it isn't fair works at some fancy organization and gets paid a lot of money. So it ain't fair. I can't argue that life is fair. It isn't fair. Inequities and in access, just to repeat a point I made earlier, are not arguments against improvement of lifespan or traits. They're just arguments about trying to make the world more fair. I'm all for that. I spend a lot of my time these days trying to figure out why the United States has an immoral, pathetic, broken health care system. I understand fairness very well. We don't have one. Uh, I would rather, if somebody wants to push me, yes, I would rather have the health system of Switzerland, Canada, Singapore, there are days when I think I'd rather have the health system of Cuba. So um, at least everybody's in. I may not get every bell and whistle, but at least everybody's in in all those countries. So whatever the politics, we should try to do what we can to remove unfairness, but that's not an argument against perfectibility. That's not an argument against living longer. That's not an argument against being better. It's just an argument against inequity. And I accept that argument, and we should work on that. We should commit perhaps now, to trying to see these technologies come toward the future with more attention to access for all. That maybe we're going to share some of these things worldwide with other countries. Manufacturing capacity, maybe we're going to look at the patent laws and see whether they protect too much intellectual property in terms of cost and access. Maybe we should have some arguments about what parts of the healthcare system are going to pay for some of these things rather than just having health care that only pays for therapy. Maybe we want to have health care that starts to pay for prevention by helping to design healthier people. Remember I said I didn't want to force it. That was my argument about privacy. But I didn't say I was against encouraging it, trying to see what we could do to make it affordable to let people use these things if they want to get rid of diseases or pick out certain traits that might lead people to have more memory more strength, more health, live longer. So at the end of the day, here's my prediction for this group. The battle over improvement, enhancement, and meliorism, or if you want to put it in a cutesy way, the fight against Puritanism is going to be the battle of the coming decades. Many of the technologies in my sphere are going to be caught up in this argument about whether they should be used to make us live longer, live better, be better. You might say it's impossible for people to argue against that. It is not. It is a subject of great objection and concern in many quarters. This fight is going to be as heated as anything we've ever seen, since I believe that biology and medicine are to the 21st century, as physics was to the 20th century. This becomes a non-trivial fight, because what we're talking about is using it in agriculture, in medicine, in reproduction, and many, many other spheres of life. So the fight about whether it's ethical to live longer, improve your traits, improve your appearance, live better, improve your quality of life is really going to be the battle. 
you know where I stand on this. I don't find any of the arguments that I've seen tried to summarize for you persuasive, but maybe there are others. If you want to raise some of them, then you should give thought, I think, to some objections. If you have some queasy feelings about where this science seems to be taking us, then I think you should do better than the arguments that have been brought forward. On the other hand, if that's all there are, then I don't see any reason not to push and to push forward with a improvement or meliorist spirit as part of medicine. What I do think we have to resist is coercion. You know, today there are people amongst us who choose not to use technologies in the United States. Not far from where I am in Philadelphia, there's a big Amish community. They don't use cars, and they farm according to older standards and ways, and they don't have electricity in their houses. And I don't agree with their lifestyle, but I believe they have every right to follow it, and I think the Amish of tomorrow, the people who want to have natural childbirth and not apply these sciences to themselves, should be allowed to do that, should be respected, should have full civil rights, and we should help pay for some of the diseases and ailments that they're going to have that they could have prevented. Because I don't believe in forcing people about a basic issue like reproduction. I don't mind encouragement. I don't mind trying to make it affordable. I don't mind trying to make many of these things easily accessible. But I would argue that the right to privacy is something that is going to have to become a linchpin for steering this new age in a way that is respectful of individual choice and difference. On the other hand, I think we should head for the new age, and I don't accept the uh, injunctions of our new Puritan friends who say that that's the wrong way to go. Thank you.